how the Northman director looked at uh, looked at masculinity and the quote macho stuff in the <laughs> in the Viking revenge thriller. So uh, his name is Robert Eggers, and he's a fantastic director. But I, I found uh, a lot of this interview to be kind of um, current year, I guess would be the best way to describe it. But there's a lot of it that I appreciate too, because he, uh, in the end, though I think some of what he says is ridiculous, he also makes a point at the end to say like he has to leave his opinions on a lot of the stuff at the door if he's making a, a historical piece. Uh, and that type of um, artistic integrity, at the very least, I can appreciate right mm -hmm. so it says uh the uh it says uh watching the northman you'd think that robert eggers had been uh had been his life it has been wait say it again that robert eggers had been his life had been has been am i saying that wrong you'd think that robert eggers has been his life being fascinated by viking culture they i think need they need to mean, fix that yeah, yeah that's a typo that's okay like, okay i'm just making sure it wasn't me yeah, that's no. uh, uh, so. right, it's roasting cinema huh. blend right i'm not now. trying to uh that you'd think he'd spent his life being fascinated by viking culture uh the movie not only has the same authentic feel uh possessed by his previous two films but goes deep as far as adapting the legend of amleth is that the, is that how you pronounce that i don't know but it's, it looks like amleth Close to me. Enough. and in, in including elements of norse mythology if one didn't know any better one would think that uh think of it being a long gestating passion project for the filmmaker only now able to make thanks to the success of the witch and the lighthouse uh the the lighthouse is i I was talking to Shane Cashman before the show today. He's a huge fan of The Witch. I'm a huge fan of The Lighthouse, so I, I highly recommend anybody, if you have not yet seen those movies, they are very much... Uh, uh, the Lighthouse is, in my opinion, why you should uh, not discount Robert Pattinson as an actor. Uh, and that also, was really good. Yes, uh, and a, a fantastic performance from Willem Dafoe, who I got his name right right there. I didn't say William. I said Willem. That's uh, good on my part. Uh, <laughs> the truth is much more... Um, we're gonna back, back to the article. The truth is much more complicated. However, in reality, Robert Eggers wasn't particularly knowledgeable about Vikings prior to getting together with Alexander Skarsgård to make the Northmen. The reason being its association, here we go, its associate, association with masculine tropes and the misappropriation of the culture by right-wing extremists. These conflicts were ultimately overcome by a combination of two things. Eggers recognizing the natural beauty found in Scandinavia and his ability to comment on the subjects with his approach to the story. So we're going to skip right over the ridiculous part about uh, masculine culture and right-wing extremists. I don't care what your political leanings are. That does not matter to me. I think that's a ridiculous take. That's fine. I do find it hilarious, though, that he's talking about... Um, <laughs> uh, that, that he uses beauty to, to find these things. But also he says, I, I want to know what he means by masculine tropes. Um, also, that's like a selling point for me. It's yeah. like a movie with masculine tropes. I'm like, I'm there. We Sounds were, good. We were watching this trailer, and I kid you not, like four people were like in the like in the in the theater. We're like, yeah, yeah, look at the violence. This is awesome. Yeah. Like, it's like dudes in shape, and they're and they're killing each other. This is awesome. It's funny because like ordinarily, when men are portrayed in movies as effeminate or moronic, um, just completely useless. No one says that those are like tropes. Those are that's just accepted as like an accurate depiction of of men. The Homer Simpson. But approach. when but you when men are portrayed doing anything, yeah. yeah, doing anything um, heroic, traditionally masculine, yeah. then it's a trope. It's the entire selling point of this movie. I was watching this trailer. I'm like, this is a movie about a dude like getting revenge on another dude for killing his family. This is like the most old school I mean, crap I've seen. There is some wild stuff in it, like yeah. howling at the moon. Yeah, that's but, awesome. Um, Do it. That's cool. Like, well, and if he's getting revenge, I haven't seen the trailer, but like presumably there's like a code of ethics and honor and th values and community. And there's mm -hmm. a reason like there's like a idea of like clan, like mm, clannishness, right? That yeah. like unites people. Like there's stuff about that that I don't even think we, I think it is traditionally a masculine value in a lot of literature and mm -hmm. art. It doesn't have to be, but also it's something uh, modern culture strays away from. They pursue individuality and like uh, personal and self pursuit overall, and to the detriment of some important aspects of like community building. Yeah, uh, perhaps they don't understand the importance of those elements uh, as far as like storytelling as a whole. Well, and I would argue that it goes against a lot of modern cultural narratives, right? Yeah. Like, uh, self-love and things that in moderation that could be good but to the extent at which some people want you to be indulged by them and to pursue them blindly without any other interests you know it's very different from Norse culture and you know especially like 
when you think of North, Norse mythology and the cultures that told those stories, like they are growing and established in like extreme brutal weather conditions, mm -hmm. right? Like you need community yeah. to survive. And he, he uses mm -hmm. the term, the beauty of Scandinavia, but they go, you know, he, they, it's glossing over the fact that they talk about, he, he says right here, he says, I didn't have a ton of knowledge because originally I wasn't interested in Vikings. I didn't like the macho stuff and the right wing misappropriation of Viking culture put me off even more. I don't know what that is. I'm from Minnesota and we have the Minnesota Vikings as our football team. So you I don't guys know. misappropriated? So, I think we misappropriated Viking culture first. I'm just saying fair, I should have worn a Viking fair, hat today. Why didn't I do that? Yeah, come on. What's going on? I don't think you actually misappropriated it because um, Minnesota and that region of the country mm -hmm. is the, like basically heartland of uh, the American Scandinavian migration pattern. Um, I, you know, I do know that like there is a link to some... Um, I don't like the term right-wing extremism, but like there are a lot of right-wing and... Tr more traditional conservative people who make references to like Valhalla and yeah. like North's culture. Uh, you know, the who thing, are not part of the North's culture. We don't, I don't actually uh, know yeah, that. I, uh, and also like it's, we're not allowed to misappropriate cultures, but to be fair, like if they are actually of Scandinavian descent, isn't that them just being connected to, to something they're already related to? Well, yeah. whether you're coming from the perspective of idolizing Norse culture for your own political ends whatever they may be or you're criticizing it saying that there it's like too much about masculine machismo and like you know cheap tropes yep. you're still judging it from a modern perspective and that's what i think the big and not issue telling the story yeah from their perspective well and maybe i'm just being like you know so I don't know, stubborn basically, but like, I think there should be more traditional masculine tropes in media. I like, I'll go see this movie just for that. I'm sorry. The director didn't like it. I think that's a positive thing to portray. My, uh, my issue with this is that the, the lens of, of criticizing what they consider traditional masculinity is done through all of the benefits that have been gained from past, uh, you know, masculine, you know, through the masculinity of the past, yeah, which helped <laughs> develop the world we live in today where you, uh, it's essentially, um, cannibalized the need for a lot of people to even have those traits because society is so easy on them now. Now, right, that strong they just, men create good times, and good times create weak men, and weak men create bad times, etc., yep. etc. I feel like continues. Robert Eggert's like if he had come out and been like, "Yeah, I love the macho stuff," yep. it would be like scandalous, anti-feminist yeah. director. Like, I feel like in some ways, like maybe he didn't care about it, but also maybe he has to sort of be like, "Well, no, like masculinity is a dangerous thing. We don't really want to promote it too much, but also this movie would not have made it without it." You and, know what yeah. I mean? And what I will give him credit for is that he talks about leaving his. Uh, belief about modern sensibilities at the door while making a period piece. I can respect that even if I think his opinion is is wrong. But it says, but when I took a trip to Iceland, the landscapes were so brutal and inspiring and epic, it made me pick up some Viking sagas and learn about them. Yes, they, the, the, they were brutal because the world they lived in was undeveloped and brutal. Yeah. It was a requirement of uh, of what their existence was. That's not was. an indictment of their character. No, it is not. Uh, it is not at all. It says, It would have been impossible for Eggers to make the Northman as the faithful, authentic thriller that it, with a, that with his limited knowledge. So he talks about he hires people, you know, historians. I do like how he hired like a poet and a historian. He's like, we can't have too much masculinity, so we're going to hire a poet. I'm just kidding. I'm not. Because <laughs> masculine poets men can cannot be into poetry. Yes. That's not at all a stereotype. It's not a thing. So, <laughs> so it says the, the finest, uh, the finest, historians and archaeologists in the field of Viking studies were called upon to ensure accuracy in telling the Amleth legend and depicting the year 895 AD. As anyone who has ever seen the trailer for the Northmen can attest, what still ended what uh, what still ended up being in part of the film was Robert Eggers described as the macho stuff, what pop culture regularly renders as high testosterone cliches, uh, as in aggression, revenge, honor, and power. Uh, uh, all uh, are all still themes in which the movie engages, which because they are universal and they are things that everyone understands. What I found is like a lot of the what, what they call cliches nowadays 
are being abandoned for extremely, extremely narrowly focused ideas, which are only going to appeal to a small group of people. Whereas the idea of power, the idea of revenge and the idea of honor are all almost entirely universal and everyone can adapt their world belief uh, into um, figuring out something about themselves in relation to those, those qualities, to those mm -hmm. traits, which so all he's doing is telling a brutally honest story about universal themes that are now considered problematic <laughs> by today's society. He says, uh, to be more blunt, this movie is, uh, is a, this is a movie where Alexander Skarsgård is ripping out throats and Ethan Hawke and Willem Dafoe get naked and howl at the moon. Do it. Do it, my friends. So what, they go on like a bachelor party? D exactly. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I don't know if you've been to Vegas on like, or, like <laughs> I don't know if you've been in the desert on like a Friday, but yeah. So it says for Eggers, it's <laughs> like, important. That's how men bond. Like, who am I to judge? Yeah. It's a little weird, but like. Have you ever been to a bachelor party? I have not, to yes. be fair. <laughs> For Eggers, it was important not to impose modern sensibilities and our society's evolving definition of masculinity in the material. But where the story concludes provides the audience with the opportunity to make judgments about the value of the hero's choices, said the writer-director. So he, they're, they're right about that. Uh, there is a, a sense that, in, I believe in many of the wrong ways, that our societies, uh, the ease in which we have life nowadays, that, you know, whether it's modern sensibilities through technology, through, uh, you know, how we've um, expanded our living arrangement, you know, how we live, uh, whether it's the fact that you have a grocery store on every corner, the fact that you're going to live in an apartment uh, and have a phone in your pocket at all times. All of this conclude, you know, kind of causes us to evolve as a species in in a way that's far less about survival and far more about comfort. Uh, and, and whether we think it's right or wrong to abandon those previous principles, one could say that you should never completely uh, get rid of those instincts because all of this could be taken away in a second because, you know, there's just no telling that the world is not always necessarily going to be a safe, comfortable place. So the modern sensibilities they're talking about really is what I would call a point of privilege to look at him <laughs> as, um, yes, uh, nice. uh, as a, it is a point of Western privilege to be able to look at those as modern sensibilities and not survival traits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, at the very least, what you can say is that he is uh, not allowing his unique Western perspective uh, in 2022 to cloud how this movie was made, which I can appreciate. Mm -hmm. I think like being in the age of infinite information and infinite entertainment, we think that we don't have anything to learn from ages that came before us that's a huge problem and in today's world i think it's people, just pure arrogance there's a lot of hubris in today's society to you know okay boomer uh you know your <laughs> your, your elders have nothing to teach you maybe my elders have nothing to teach me but one of I their think, elders have i think something that's to teach them. like true to a certain extent i will say that i think occasionally certain cultures just become trendy over others i mean i remember people talk about it in the 90s when like eastern philosophy yeah and this that and the other became trendy and we look to ancient you know chinese medicine even now in holistic you know health blogs or whatever anyone could make reference to that i think that in some ways like old european cultures aren't explored because we are taught so heavily about you know in comparison more recent stuff like colonialization or the revolutionary war or development of america we feel like we kind of know what happened in europe yep. and europe is an incredibly con complex uh amalgamation of mul many cultures that yeah. piece a tremendous amount of you know geographic and sociological struggle it's they're really fascinating and i'm excited that they you know, I understand what he's saying, like Norse mythology might have been sort of linked to some uh, a political ideology people don't believe in or support. And so but it's only after the fact, only after the fact. Well, and well I still after. think it's worth exploring. Like if you don't like it, you shouldn't just reject it. Right. Yeah. You should yourself go into it and explore it and see what it's actually about instead mm -hmm. of being like, well, you know, those crazy people I hate got there first. So. That I, I'm going to uh, just ignore it. I mean, I think this too reminds me of what's that show Outlander yes. that talked about like Scotland. I yep. mean, there are cultures in Europe that resemble North that we just don't really know that much about because again, I mean, to be fair, there's a lot of histories and a lot of cultures in the world to study. And I don't know. I just think it's a positive thing to have ancient European cultures depicted in a way that's interesting. That's engaging. Like we've talked about a couple of times. I fully believe that, uh, by like movies that t t tell you about financial crimes and yeah. things like this will be how most children learn about history. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't think it's a bad thing. And you know, in some ways I'm, I think I totally get what you're saying that he's leaving his, uh, the director's leaving his sense of modern culture at the door. On the other hand, like I think he 
shouldn't be afraid to just be excited about this project. Uh, in modern Hollywood, you absolutely have to be afraid because you don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, um, but I don't care about modern Hollywood. I, I live by my own standards. It's, I, I, it just sucks that you have to present it with a caveat. Yeah, yeah time that's exactly what it is. Put it, this is the the you know Norse value system, and then also like traditional masculinity, and we're gonna put it in a box over here. Yeah. We had we can still it. profit. We off don't it. like yeah, it. Profit but, off of it, but also just like ignore trash it. Yeah. at every opportunity. Yeah. I do believe that what you said earlier about the hubris of of like thinking that there's nothing more to learn from your elder. Like I think a lot of that comes from internet, uh, from the age of having your cell phone in your pocket, where you're you're no longer allowed to just not know something. Mm -hmm. You're expected to know everything because you have a device in your pocket that can tell you everything. But we're but, also the least curious we've ever been. Yeah. Yes. Let to me ask you, take like, advantage of it. If you guys are with your family or if you're out to dinner with friends or whatever, like if you're talking to people face to face and someone is like, you know. Can snakes get arthritis? This is a real conversation I had yesterday. Yes, it was. <laughs> do you immediately pull out your phone and look it up because it's worth knowing the answer? Or do you just kind of like try and barroom debate it? Because that's what people used to do. It just mm -hmm. sort they of just like mm -hmm. was something that sparked it. conversation. And now you just want to get the answer immediately. And yeah. then no conversation comes yeah. from it. So it's actually, it's stunting your uh, your group dynamic. Yeah, it's like yeah. a blessing. Like, you know the answer, right? You can get information so quickly. And that's, you know... In that's an incredible asset to culture but on the other hand like if you're really trying to build community and like discuss things with people having the information in a weird way and right it might benefit you more to just have the not, discussion no, yeah and just talk I, I also think that there's a huge difference and one of my biggest issues is that there's a very large difference between knowing something and understanding it mm. and uh, knowing the answer to a question is just trivia understanding it is wisdom uh, and most of what I feel like society has taught us nowadays is it's good to know the answer not understand what the answer actually means for whatever the point of your discussion is and that's a, a huge gap in uh, where we're going as a society so we will uh, we'll see what goes on with this I still want to see this I might wait for it to uh, Mary doesn't want to see throats getting ripped out I'm just saying um, I'd rather watch The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent compared to The Northman, but I am not opposed to either one. Yes. Well, uh, I'll see The Northman with you. To be clear. Um, I, I think I saw that they have uh, they have um, Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent at one of the other theaters, so we may we may do that. So mm -hmm. we will see where this goes, but I, I'm hoping that the move, that the director uh, is just, I think he just feels pressure. Comes out pressure. tomorrow, it looks like. Yeah, it's probably out. You can probably see early showings now, but like the, the as far as I'm concerned, he's like making his bones with the with the press junket, like making sure that he doesn't get... Uh, have he's more covering courage. all his bases. Yeah. He should just have more courage. Like, right. be like, yeah, I did this cool story about Vikings who were real and I didn't make them up and to what about a it? political ideology. I like the Ta -da. idea that like when the camera's not rolling, it's like, yeah, and they just ripped each other's throats out and yeah. it was awesome. And they're like, yeah, but don't put that in the interview we can't have that in the interview I, I can't be seen supporting um the brutal nature of our past so. it is a little bit sad that like masculinity is always like we've gotten so far and we're so afraid of traditional masculinity that now we're like well violence is traditional masculinity and it's like kind of but not actually like men aren't just brutal creatures they can be but like right it's not the brutality that was the point of the story but really how they survived it together yeah like yeah. that's interesting and the sense of honor they had but we're so afraid of traditional masculinity that like we actually have lost sight of like what it really means we also, move further and further away from it every time we try to distance ourselves from it and not talk about it i'm also not a fan of i, I believe it was I, I think the first person i saw put that word that that phrase out there was uh camille nanjiani who's uh who actually ran one of my favorite podcasts of all time called the x files files where he would break down different x files he's an actor he's from uh um, Silicon Valley, the show Silicon Valley. He's in uh, a bunch of stuff, but he, uh, um, in an interview, talked about tradi You know, it used to be about toxic masculinity, but then it's slowly now they've pushed the goalpost again. Now it's traditional masculinity. What comes after that? Just masculinity at all? I think toxic masculinity was always an attack on traditional ma masculinity. Yep. That's my hot take for you. But they're just, but they're just slowly moving the goalpost. Ver you know, in their verbiage and in, in their language mm -hmm. to to the next level. So. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.